If you're looking to get some focused practice with SAT inference questions, you've come to the right place. Just make sure to pause the video and try each question on your own first. Let's get started. All right, let's start with an easy one here. So I'm going to actually start from the blank space and it says this finding suggests. So I know that I need to figure out what this finding is. Previous sentence, Aben and his team found that tanks with duckweed and algae released higher levels of methane. So duck, wheat, and algae, higher levels of methane um, compared to water milfoil. What in the world is that? Anyway, I'm just going to start eliminating the answers that don't seem to match that. I don't care about the rest of the passage. The presence of some kinds of underwater plants like water foil helps prevent methane from escaping shallow lakes and ponds. So comparing it to the water milfoil, if duckweed and algae have higher levels than water milfoil, that could work because the water milfoil would prevent those higher levels from happening according to A. So I'm going to keep A. Shallow lakes and ponds release more methane than deeper bodies of water because shallow bodies usually have more plants. Uh, nope, that does not match what I said. Shallow lakes and ponds are more likely to contain algae than contain either water. No, that's not even talking about methane. Having a mix of algae, underwater plants and floating plants is the best way to reduce the amount of methane in shallow lakes and ponds. No, so it has to be A. Let's do another easy one. Same thing, I'm gonna start with the blank space. Hence, the pay-as-you-wish model may blank. So I get that word hence, which means I want to look at the sentence before. Um, author also discusses musician Shane Berry, who saw significant earnings from pay as you wish. Got the word but, so I need to go back again. Only about 1% opted to pay for the album, resulting in earnings below the band's expectations. Okay, so we actually have a statement there. So um, below band's expectations. But authors also discuss musician Jane Sibbery, who saw significant earnings from her pay-as-you-wish. Hence, the pay-as-you-wish model. All right, yeah, so the main ideas here are, it looks like some bands are not making as much money and some bands are making more money. And again here, you see how I'm just kind of cherry-picking the parts of the passage that I know I need to focus on by starting at the end. So I'm going to get rid of any answers that don't support the idea that some bands will do well with this and some bands will not. Uh, a, prove financially successful for some, but disappointing for others. That's literally what I just said. I would probably circle that and move on, but real quick, hold greater financial appeal for bands than for individual musicians. No. Cause most musicians who model. No. More strongly reflect. No. And we are good with A again. All right, moving on to a medium question. My strategy is going to stay the same. Since song preference plays a role in songbird mate selection, the finding suggests that blank. So the finding, I need to know what the finding is. And in the previous sentence, we get the researchers found. So nestlings produced more begging calls in response to their own dialect than to non-local dialects. Okay, so more begging calls, their own dialect. And then I link that to since song preference plays a role in mate selection. I'm going to come up with a prediction here. For those first ones, I wasn't writing it down, but if you get into more challenging questions, you might want to consider writing it down so you don't forget. Uh, you might also need to put it into your own words to help clarify things. I'm going to say something like these birds probably don't mate with many birds outside their dialect. All right, A, FH nestlings preference for their own dialect likely disappears as they mature to promote socialization between different FH populations. So that doesn't seem to line up with what I said, so no. Um, and if you cared, you might wanna look at the paragraph to see what FH is. I'm assuming it's just some kind of bird, so I don't care right now. If I end up getting confused, uh, then I'll look back. FH nestlings who show an early preference for their own dialect are likely to receive more food from their caretakers. Again, that doesn't seem to have anything to do with mating. FH nestlings preference for their own dialect likely drives them when they mature to reproduce with other FH from local rather than non-local populations. Yeah, that's pretty much saying what uh, I said in my prediction. And then D, FH nestlings show a preference for both local 
dialects and the songs of other local songbirds over the songs of non-local birds? Nope, that's not my prediction. My answer is C. All right, we got another medium one here. So this one looks like we got a pretty long sentence, and it starts with however. So I'm just going to go ahead and read through the full thing real quick. Dutch painters in the 16th and 17th centuries often showed tables filled with large wheels of cheese, delicious, or carved shards of butter. Some art historians, noting that dairy products were a major component of the Dutch diet, interpret these depictions as reflections of everyday Dutch eating habits. However, okay, focus on the however, uh, because this is going to be kind of the crux of this. So looks like most, or not most, some art historians think that the paintings are depictions of everyday eating habits. A group of researchers recently reviewed hundreds of food-related paintings and found that lemons, which could only be acquired in the Netherlands at great cost, yada, 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 feature in Dutch paintings of the period more than three times as frequently as dairy products do, thereby casting doubt on the idea that blank. Um, it would have to be this, right? The idea that these paintings are actual reflections of Dutch eating habits. So I'm going to try our actual um, reflections. Paintings are actual reflections. Cool. All right. So that's my prediction. Dairy products were a more significant component of Dutch. No. Food was a more popular subject. No. Depictions of food of the period should be taken as realistic. Yep. That's what my prediction says. Dutch painters may have depicted food for symbolic reasons. No. So answer is C. Medium question? Not so hard. All right, let's try a hard one. According to Mulvey's logic, this scene should affect viewers by blank. So I need to know what Mulvey's logic is. If I skim for Mulvey, it says, conversely, Mulvey proposes that conspicuous editing or an absence of point of view shots would induce a more critical stance toward a protagonist. So conspicuous editing, absence of point of view, more critical stance towards the protagonist. And it also says this scene, so I do want to know what the scene is. So it says consider, for example, the attic scene in Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, a conspicuously edited, so conspicuous editing, sequence of shots, a uh, few of which correspond to the protagonist's point of view. So it should affect viewers by giving them a more critical stance toward the protagonist. Um, it says it right there. So I'm just going to go for that for my prediction. I'll just use those words exactly. Obscuring their awareness of high degree of artifice? No. Lessening their identification with the protagonist, if not alienating them from the character altogether? Yep, that's exactly what I said. Compelling them to identify the film's director? Nope. Diverting their attention away from the film's content? Nope. So that's B, and that was apparently a hard one, but pretty easy using that strategy. All right, let's try one more hard one. These scientists therefore imply that blank. <laughs> so therefore, I need to look at the previous sentence. Uh, this one starts with but. I'm just going to read the whole thing for this one. It's pretty short, right? All right, many animals, including humans, must sleep cool. Sleep is known to have a role in everything from healing injuries to encoding information in long-term memory. But some scientists claim that from an evolutionary standpoint, deep sleep for hours at a time leaves an animal so vulnerable that the known benefits of sleeping seem insufficient to explain why it became so widespread in the animal kingdom. Hmm. Okay. So let's summarize, first of all, basically... We know that some scientists think that the benefits of sleep don't seem to match up with the danger of being vulnerable for so long. The widespreadness, if you will, is uh, kind of a mystery. Yeah, that'll be my guess. It's, I don't know if it's a great one, but for now, that's what I'm thinking. So prediction, widespread sleep is a bit of a mystery. A. Prolonged sleep is likely advantageous in ways that have yet to be discovered. Yeah, yeah, that would fit with the whole mystery thing. Um, most traits perform functions that are hard to understand. Most traits perform functions that are hard to understand. No, that's not talking about the sleep. It's more important to understand how widespread prolonged sleep is than to understand 
its function. No, that is not the mystery prediction. Many traits that provide significant benefits also pose risks. No. Wow. I am legitimately surprised how easy that was. It is rated as difficulty level three. That's the highest difficulty level, but yeah, just start from that last sentence and cherry pick the passage based on what you see. Working through specific problem areas like you just did is a great way to improve your score, especially when you couple that with practice exams that resemble the real thing. To sign up for a free proctored practice exam that you can't find anywhere else, go ahead and use the link in the description.